I help you? I seen something here at the Whirling Guard, and I need to talk about it. What thing? <clears throat> There's a mysterious blue steel door in the back of the kitchen. Oh yes, that door, sure. There's nothing mysterious about it. It's just a door. Do you know what's behind it? Do you have... No, I don't have a key. I don't know how to get there. And I don't care either. It's not like I've been wondering about it for ten years. It's just a frit warehouse, probably. Or some boring storage space with a bunch of <coughs> old junk and dust. Junk and dust. He wants to know what's in there. He's attempting to maintain an air of indifference. It's absolutely not convincing. I think you'd like to know what's back there. Fine, okay, a little. But my job doesn't leave me time for wondering about one locked door in one of the cafeterias <coughs> in the match. So I haven't opened it. I have cleaned the whole place a hundred times over, though, after the animals. And I haven't found a key, so good luck with that. I saw a sign that said a ma the mass hall is reserved for the union. Yes, not the whole damn union, thank God. Just the nastiest and loudest faction. They come here in the evening, <coughs> dumb, unruly types. Think they're big shit. But they're good customers. They place big orders and always pay on time. We should find out who this Lord faction is occupying the booth. Loudness means talkative, and we need info. How do we find them? We don't. We have to wait. They'll show up sooner or later. Men get hungry. Even men will strike. You glance at the clock on the wall behind the manager. <coughs> huh. It's after 4 p.m. The signs said deserve starting 4 p.m. Why isn't anyone in the mass hall? Good question. They're probably getting drunk or protesting something somewhere or laying low after the, you know, lynching. Why is that? They probably fucking killed that guy or something, and that's why. Hmm. I have a feeling we'll make their acquaintance sooner or later. What? By the way, you should come back to this thing-based questionnaire if you see anything interesting in the whirling later. I need a drink. Can you pour me one? Do I have a shaker in my hand? <coughs> is this, is this <coughs> a shaker? It's not a shaker. It's nothing. He's holding nothing. It is but an imitation. No, there's nothing there. Am I wearing a little bow tie? Am I wearing a bow tie and doing this? I shake the imaginary shaker furiously. Am I smiling? Do you see me smiling and shaking my little shaker? No. Do you know why? Because you're not a bartender? That's right. I'm the cafeteria manager. It's so insecure, this little clear. bitch. Is there anything else? <clears throat> calm. This man needs to understand you need a drink to help the community deal with police stuff. <laughs> I'm an alcohol operated detective. If you want me to clean up the dead body and solve the case, then you need to insert alcohol into my mouth. Oh, well, in that case, let me pour you a nice, big, refreshing marinella. Do you want that out of a glass or a pineapple? You do not want to taunt me, not when it comes to marinellas. Don't be an imbecile. I'm not going to serve you a marinella. I have work to do and broken things to fix. If that was all, I'd like to return to it. Well, this guy absolutely sucks. <clears throat> We should think about calling it today, maybe. The nights are still miserably cold this time of year. Yes, my hostel room We can calls. pick up where we left off tomorrow morning. Wait, I want to look a new thing. <clears throat> a new fourth cabinet slot. A 
This is the door to the room you redecorated. Good afternoon. Just a moment. We should talk about our progress on the investigation. Let's go out to the balcony. All right, let's go. <coughs> the air outside is brisk. The lieutenant is silent for a moment. He listens to the traffic hum. Then... Now then, we should talk about the investigation. But I also feel you're a bit hazy on the RCM. Our role here, our rights, our jurisdiction, basically. How do you think today went? Well, <coughs> we inspected the victim's body, so that's good. It was not easily approachable in that state, but we did it. I would say our initial inspection was very thorough, and we have solid leads to follow up on. In addition, we got that body down from the tree, and we performed a field autopsy on the victim. We found some things we can really work with. Moreover, you found that the hanged man wasn't just hanged, he was also shot. That was some excellent detective work. And you managed to locate and pull out the bullet, so we can <coughs> make up the gun. All this is invaluable. No big deal. The rest is up to the boys in processing. Maybe they will surprise us by doing the job for once, but I wouldn't count on it. We also performed a thorough search of the crime scene. All in all, we handled the situation very professionally. Now for the interviews. The initial interviews, yes. Now well, we talked to some people. <coughs> Including a Vartler, a daunting adversary, if there ever was one. He wasn't particularly forthcoming with useful information. He's not saying much on the matter because he thinks you could have gotten more out of Everard. I'm a little intimidated by him, honestly. He has stuff on me. Well, we will have to work through that. Claire also helped you. How should I say? Remember your name? That's a relief. I want a different name when I haven't ruined yet. Oh, well. You can look into the process of changing the <coughs> name after we finish <coughs> this investigation. We talked to Joyce Messier, but didn't get any information from her. I have a feeling Joyce knows how dangerous the situation really is. We have to get her to talk to us. If Kim is emphasizing something this much, it really must be important. Above all, though, today was exhausting. What's with all the running? You run a lot. Is that a standard prison 41 practice? I have a really good theory about why you're running so fast, son. Just you wait until you get up tomorrow. I don't know why I do the things I do with Tan Kitsuragi. It's impressive, especially for the <coughs> whole region. And in those hills. Nice shoes, by the way. I like the green. Goes with the orange. What are our powers exactly? The RCM? They are quite limited, actually. The power officers of the Revachol Citizens Militia exercise most frequently is imposing fines of up to 1,000 real for offenses in accordance with an interdepartmental schedule. Okay, what else? We can arrest people, of course, <coughs> but rather than bringing someone in directly <coughs> to solve the station closely, it prevents confusion and overcrowding. I see, and if someone resists? As you may have gathered from the fact that we are expected to carry a record of our kills, like the one in the watermarks, we are permitted to use whatever force is necessary, and strongly admonished not to abuse that power. And who makes all these rules? The coalition government? Yes, the international community's mission in Ravachon. And <coughs> the RCM was formed by the coalition government to restore order in the international zone after the revolution. So we did. Now we attempt to maintain that order. No more, no less. Or perhaps it is better to say we were allowed to form. 
It's a point of contention whether the citizens of Relachol or the coalition government formed in DRCL. I'd say it was the coalition government. It's probably more honest, yes. Either way, the moral intent leases us the right to keep the peace in this city, and they will take it away if we misuse it. Or if they think you do. The moral intern, what is it? The Moralist <coughs> International are the world's largest political organization. You know who they are. They have been running this place after the revolution failed. If I didn't know them, how would you describe them? They're a union of center-left and center-right parties across the real belt. Our coalition government is just one of its many projects. They also run the ICP, EPIS, most intergovernmental organizations in the world. What do they believe in? What do they believe in? <coughs> they are Dolorians. They believe they continue the humanist project set forth by her innocence Dolores Day four centuries ago. Others say they are just technocrats. Those others say they continue the humanist project set forth by Dolores Day. Who was Dolores Day? A historic figure? The author of the modern age? You will have to look elsewhere for opinions. The subject of humanism is too abstract for me. For you, she is something painful. Though it's hard to say why. What is their symbol? Interesting question. It's a blue forget-me-not. Their motto is love, compassion, self-discipline. I think you can gauge what they want you to think of them from that. Something kind and usual. Something almost self-explanatory. Something even a little feminine. But in a strict manner. Something like the dark blue, serious color of the early night sky above. What do you think of them? The moral intern. <coughs> I try not to have opinions on facts until they change. And it doesn't look like that's about to happen. Okay, I have an opinion on the moral in turn. Do you? Jesus. We are stooges of the world's biggest bourgeois organization protecting bourgeois rights. No, we are stooges of the world's biggest bourgeois organization protecting the people of Revachol. That's the hand we will take. Without the MI, we would be common vigilantes. <coughs> hmm, let me think about that. What, what my stance is on this? I mean, we should make our own law. Spoken like a revolutionary, not a cop. But hypothetical aside, in Martinez we already are vigilantes. At least the <coughs> I expect our job here to prove quite challenging. The lights of the orphan district are reflected in his glasses. The red and golden orbs of the motorway sliding like pearls on a string from east to west as Revachol commutes back to the suburbs. Tomorrow is Tuesday. Monday is over. I didn't know you smoke, Kim. I have a cigarette every night when I go over my notes. It's something of a ritual. Oh man, he looks so devastatingly <laughs> cool with that cigarette. How did you get so cool, Kim? You mean this? This is <coughs> it's an unnecessary trial of will and unhealthy. Keeping the habit within the parameters he's given himself takes a lot of focus. It would be easier to simply quit. Right then, the debrief. Yes, it's been a long and eventful day. The dying lights of the city shimmer below. Slowly, like luminous clouds, they pass on his lenses. The lieutenant looks at his slim cigarette, contemplating the next drag. An aerostatic passes overhead, the whiskers of its floodlights on the ground below. Kitsuragi's glasses light up as he looks to the sky. Two glowing circles. They really don't like us here. And the mouth on that kid, Kuno. It's different in men, in Jamrock and the GRIH. Why are they like this? It's our <coughs> leaving this place to the dogs, to the union, to the company. 
not daring to come here more often. This place has fallen between the cracks, the jurisdictions of our two prisons. And in Jamrock and the GRIH? -G we run this city. <coughs> this is land. It's incredibly hard. Human beings are... But we are in control, and it's worth it. The organization works, our systems work. If they didn't, the city would disintegrate. We won't change anything here. Probably not. Anyway, positive change happens slowly. We never really get to see the impact of our actions. He is very tired, but the dark circles under his eyes make him look younger, not older. Thank you for this. Yeah, it's getting very cold now. Let's go. <clears throat> I never spotted the empty cassette. The bed is cold and not particularly. The option to go to sleep becomes available every night. No time to rest yet. <coughs> a mirror hangs on the bathroom wall. In it, your face adorned with the expression. Still not happening. It won't come off that easy. The chain cutters slip out of your hands as you attempt to twist the faucet into place. Well, you know one thing for sure. You've probably never been a plumber. Man. This is not the cleanest bathtub in the world. Ah, that soap scum smell. It smells like life, at least compared to you. The bathtub slowly fills with water. The water beckons. The water is only lukewarm, but still comforting, like amniotic fluid. A few beer cans are bobbing up and down along your flanks, like sad duckies. Now you are alone with your thoughts in the tub. But it's easier than being alone with your thoughts outside the tub. I actually disagree with that. <clears throat> because you're you're very limited. You can't run away in a tub. So it, for me, it sucks more to be alone with my thoughts in a tub. They're not even really thoughts. Just assorted sensations. None of them acute enough to focus on. You see the corpse. You can still smell the cadaver on you. It's going to take more than one bath to get rid of that stench. Then, houses along a narrow street, a video rental, darkness on the planet's curvature. Your fingers grow pale and are covered with tiny whirls as the water cools. What are you doing? You're not some fat fish in a fucking aquarium. Time to get moving. The water line recedes as you stand. You are cold now. Your clothes stick to your still moist skin. A mirror hangs on the bathroom wall. In it, your a mirror hangs in the bathroom wall. In it. <laughs> Look how fucking uncool we are right now. <laughs> 